Hello and welcome! I'm Kim, and together with my dogs, Bobby and Bilou, I live in my self-built camper van, and we are getting ready to travel Europe together. Come along, as we say yes to new adventures! Welcome back to another video. Oh, it is morning. We had breakfast and the dogs were doing great. Pilou didn't bark once. Oh. <laughs> she didn't bark once and now she's telling me she wants to go outside. Uh, I walked the dogs yesterday evening from 9 to 10 because I wanted Pilou to do number two. She didn't. So then last night at 4.30 she was like, can I go out please? So we had to go outside in the night. But everything was fine we were very quiet and uh, we had a good night's sleep and now we're gonna go outside so let's go check out and explore the surroundings hey so for the people who are new watching this video I've got to explain what I'm doing um, I travel in my van the van got broken she's in the workshop uh, in the garage and so we went tonight to Monsanto. We are in Monsanto, Compilou. And uh, we stayed tonight in a hotel. We just checked out. And now we are going to have a look at the surroundings. And a friend of mine is going to pick us up later. So I hope in the sunshine it's going to be a little bit warmer because it's quite cold today. And I didn't bring any jackets or anything. But uh, I'm carrying around my backpack. So that's like a whole exercise regime on its own. <laughs> so let's go have a look around. such a friendly dog she always makes friends wherever she goes she just says hello to everybody and dogs uh, people that like it they interact with her and if they don't I just keep her at distance but usually people like her So I have to correct something that I said yesterday, which is hilarious to me. Yesterday we went up. We're now going down. And up in the hills, there is this castle. And this castle, the surroundings in the castle are used in um, House of the Dragon uh, of Game of Thrones. Now, I haven't seen it. I know of the existence, but I haven't seen the series. So I went up there and it was so beautiful and these big boulders and everything was so awesome. And then I said, I understand why they chose this 
location because you can't make this in the studio. Not having watched House of, Dragon, House of the Dragon. So then, that night I couldn't really sleep, so I started googling, seeing if I had seen the exact space. And turns out, you can make that in a studio, <laughs> because they built an entire castle on top of the ruin with just computer stuff. So... <laughs> So you can build it in a studio, but they did use a lot of the location, but they, if you Google it, it's really cool. The The pictures are probably copyrighted, so I'm not going to use it, but it's hilarious. I was walking there thinking, oh, this is so cool. And then I saw the picture of what they actually did with it. And I was like, oh yeah, yeah, they also did a lot. I just witnessed that <laughs> this car went past here and it just barely fit <laughs> like, like how <laughs> he didn't even have his mirrors because he had to put the mirrors uh, the other way otherwise he couldn't fit oh it's just bonkers but that was hilarious to see one of the things in Portugal that I really have been enjoying as opposed to the Netherlands is that there's a lot of plants here that are green in winter so they have eucalyptus they have the olive trees whole lots of other stuff there's even some little flowers already blooming and the weather during the day feels like spring and then at night it feels like freezing so cold but I really like that because you can have a comfortable night and their surroundings are really green. I think that's really beautiful and that's way different. It gives you a way different feel than the Netherlands because in the Netherlands there's a lot of uh, trees that, leave their, that lose their foliage. So all the trees are bare and here there's so much green and lush and even though it's winter so it's going to be way better in like a month and a half. But... It's just so cool. I really like that.
so cool. Behind me is a really big enclosure and there's a lot of pigs free ranging. It's so funny. There's a couple of dogs there talking to us, but these pigs are having so much fun out here. Today's a beautiful day and I've decided to just start walking down the, the road that I know Gordon is going to come up uh, to get us so that he doesn't have to come up there. Plus we got some water out of the square in the village and uh, yeah, we're just gradually making our way down. It's really beautiful. The weather is awesome today. It's like 13 degrees and the sun is really warm. And uh, yeah, I'm really looking forward to being <laughs> reunited with Sophie. I really missed her. And, you know, I just made my own safe space inside of her. And just being away, I was really aware of how everything is different and how that affects me. So the bed is different. The pillows are different. The comforter is different. The towels feel different, stuff like that. It just it adds up and in the end I kind of feel uncomfortable. And I was thinking, I'm not really a hotel person. Whenever I would go on vacation, I would usually get an apartment with my parents as well, or maybe a camping or the tent. And then I would just have my own entrance and I would, you know, it feels like you're living in that house with other people. So you have to keep them in mind. And with being with two pups, being a little bit wary of, oh, wait, what if they bark? Or what, you know, people had to go out at night, like, oh my gosh, if she needs to go out and then I need to go out at night, what if I wake people? Stuff like that. Just don't like <laughs> having people close by, I guess. So, uh, yeah, I was a little out of my comfort zone, but it did have fun. I had a kind of a good night's sleep. I woke up and then people had to go out, but we were having fun and I was just talking to my friend on the phone. And we were doing the manifesting thing and what we want in life and how we want that and how it feels for me to now spend this much money on Sophie and how that affects my budget and how that might affect my travel and just thinking of like, okay, so this is what's happening now, but what do I want to happen? How do I want to manifest this into something good? Like visiting Monsanto, which was lots of fun. And just, we were just having such a good conversation. I loved it. I really love having a friend to just talk to about these kinds of things and about how these things affect you and how the reality is right now, which is the result of your past thoughts and actions, and then how you want your thoughts and actions to be for the future. So I love that. And we've been doing that ever since she wanted to have her own manifestation on a whole, it's a whole story. And I wanted to have my van. So we've been doing that from the beginning, drawing the van, talking about the van, googling vans, watching a lot of YouTube about vans. And then in the end, just getting the guts to just start doing it, even though you don't know the outcome. Just start moving in the direction you want to be in. And that's why I'm now here in Portugal, living the life I've been manifesting two years ago, <laughs> just doing it and seeing how it affects you because there's so many things that you don't think about uh, beforehand, which you get to know, like my road anxiety and it kind of being terrible sometimes. But at the same time, having the joy of having done it and being in a new place and enjoying the sunshine and enjoying all the orange trees and enjoying all the cork trees and all the fun and all the people that you meet along the way, you know, experiencing it. And then, yeah, I, I'm, I am having a blast. I love it. It's just been a, a bit of a, not really stressful, but like expanding the comfort zone kind of last two days. So I'm really looking forward to seeing Gordon and getting, being back to the van. I hope she's fixed because where am I going to stay if she's not? But we'll see. Yeah, I'm just looking forward to life. Just, I'm just looking forward to life. That's basically what I'm looking forward to. So let's go see how Sophie's doing. Hey, you guys. Guess who we got back? It's Sophie. Uh, I vlogged what I'm about to vlog this afternoon, but 
because it was such an eventful day and I was just walking around with my backpack and stuff was just happening. I didn't drink and I didn't eat anything after nine and I only thought about it at five and I was <laughs> kind of a rough shape. So I did groceries. Okay. I'm still not fully recovered. I think tomorrow will make more sense. But um, we got Sophie back. Gordon picked me up from the place I was waiting for him. We went to the van and the guy there doesn't speak any English. So I just walked into his shop and I was like, is everything okay? And he was like, yes. And I was so happy. Oh, he said, see, and he was like that. So I was so happy. And he changed the alternator. He showed me the old alternator. It doesn't mean anything to me. Gordon said that he was looking inside of the copper wiring and it was looking very ratchet. So he said, it's an old alternator. It's good. You got it fixed. And then I paid for it. It was 450 euros in total because... He showed me that the alternator was 411 euros and his, the money I was paying him was only 22. So I gave him 10 extra. I said, here for Cerveza, go get a beer. And I thanked him so much for helping me on such short notice and immediately helping me. And I was so happy I got Sophie back. But it also made me realize that my time helping Gordon um, had come to an end. It was time to move on to go do other things I helped him for two and a half weeks and we did a lot of things I built a cat house we built a roof we fixed a roof we fixed a road we cleared out a lot of junk put up a lot of stuff uh, we made a lot of pictures of stuff he needs to sell so we did we had a lot done it was awesome and um, maybe I'll go back there sometime in the future but I'm st I've kind of forgot about that I was traveling and I want to continue traveling. So that's what we're going to do. We are now in Castello Branco. We drove here of Castello Branco. It's uh, 45 minutes away from where I was staying near Panama Cor, Aguash. And I got some groceries and the thing that's still not fixed on the van is the signal of the brakes, which freaked me out the first time. So I'm still getting the brake for a visit workshop. I asked the guy that fixed her today if he could look at it. And he said no. And then he checked the brakes. And he said the brakes are fine. It's just the sensor. And while I'm in Castello Branco, I think I'm going to um, go to the Mercedes-Benz dealer tomorrow. And ask if they can fix it. When they could fix it. And how much that would cost. Because my dad says that it's just the sensor. And the sensor isn't that expensive. And that even... If I would really try, I could do it myself, but I really don't want to. There's, I know a lot of things in life. I can do a lot of stuff. For some things, I just want to hire somebody. I'm so tired of having to do all of it myself, which sounds a bit depressing, but like I'm like, I'm just going to hire somebody to do this. So I'm just going to check that out in the morning. I'm so happy that she's fixed. And I was actually thinking it was the first time since I bought her that I had her somewhere overnight. Maybe she's been... Oh, she's been in a shop before I moved into her. But I've almost been living in her for a year. It's now... I think tomorrow is the 1st of February. February. I've moved into the van the 1st of March. So it's going to be 11 months tomorrow. And this was the first night that I was not sleeping in her. I think I haven't slept in, in anything else. No, I think I've been full time living in here. So that was, uh, it was a whole adventure and I really liked it. I had a lot of fun, but it was also just one day was enough. I'm really happy she's fixed. Okay, I'm going to stop the video for tonight and I'll see you guys tomorrow and let's see if we can fix the brake thingy.